Hey guys, what's happening? Check that out. Check out that it's another offer up score. 600 bucks. It's crazy. Don't know how I got my truck yet, but look at that thing. 600 bucks. It's like a commercial grade, you know, CNC router. 24,000 24, uh, RPM spindle. I mean, the electronics kind of suck on it. It's an old pennant, but I'll show you all that stuff. I need to get off the truck. Dude, 600 bucks. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm about to go through it all, clean it up. But I got it from a, uh, like a, like a granite shop that did like engraving for like, they did like a marble slabs and stuff. So, wow. I mean, these things are probably about, they're close to five grand new, like 4,500 new with all the accessories. And like, this actually also has a water table, like the stainless steel water table, but. Uh, I'll bring it down here so you can see it better. At least I need to find a way to bring it down here. <laughs> Take a closer yeah. look at it. Um, yeah, this thing's pretty pretty gnarly. All right. Uh, so I started. There was a bunch of rust on my feet, so I'm, I'm actually uh, using my little air tool there to get some rust off. This linear rail actually looks okay. This one was a lot more rusty on this side, and I've already kind of started cleaning it here in the back. But you can see it's hoping it's not pitted, but I gotta clean those up. I gotta take these way covers off here. There's still dirt in there. Gotta go through and clean everything up. Yeah, like I said, I really I'm still kind of in shock I got this for 600 bucks. Yeah, you don't actually see the side panels. Side panels are in the garage. But um, you can tell it's a good one because it just has those gigantic linear rails, linear rails all around. Um, you know, obviously it's extremely heavy duty. So yeah, this is this is not like a like a hobbyist. This was actually in a working like large corporation cutting uh, granite, marble, engraving. Uh, I'm not gonna be engraving much done with it. I just like the water table and you know for I'm gonna be doing carbon fiber and uh, you know like aluminum stuff too here on there. So, but yeah, I wanted a faster spindle because my other CNC machine it's, it doesn't spin fast enough to really good quality metal or you know super good high quality finishes on, on aluminum but the main thing with the CNC machine is just rigidity you know so yeah look at those huge uh, cable chains just crazy well constructed ISO 901 I'm not sure what that means but you know typical 400 watt spindle what is it uh, probably 2.2 kilowatt yeah so this is probably you can get one of these for probably about $200 online probably on Amazon VFD. Like I said, the electronics suck. Let me give you a closer view of that. Yeah, it has this handheld controller called a Rich Auto. So it's not like your typical like Mach 3 or Linux CNC or Acorns, Central Acorns. It doesn't actually have an external computer. So everything's running that little handheld. You even load G code from the handheld, and it's like it's a headache to run, operate that thing from the little handheld. So um, I, I don't prefer that. I'm an IT guy, I like computers, so. <laughs> I like the plus I want to be able to control like these pumps and stuff you know via, via M codes um, you know I want to be able to control like the spindle coolant on and off um, you know like I said I don't think there's a okay you have your main breakers what's crazy is the 220 comes out of that little connector right there like your typical standard I forget the NEMA number but it's like a computer power cable comes in NEMA 34's um yeah, look at this huge, gigantic um, transformer. So the power supply, I haven't looked at it thoroughly yet, but I'm assuming this power supply is 24 volt, powers a rich auto. And then this gigantic transformer right here takes 220 and converts it down to, um, looks like 70 volts. So I'm guessing the input on these things is probably ranged probably from like 48 to whatever kind of voltage, but high enough because it says 70 volt here. So 220, 70 volt, but they're not closed loop, so that kind of sucks. So eventually, I probably uh, upgrade these to closed loop, just because, like I said, material is so expensive now that man, if you mess up a piece of aluminum, I mean that piece of aluminum could be like 30 or 40 bucks, um, you know. So plus, I gotta go figure out what these jumper settings mean, but yeah, I'm gonna be taking this out and converting it to either Linux CNC or Mach 3. Um, because I actually do have a lot of extra controllers from other products. So I'm trying to keep this sort of on a budget, you know. I don't want to go crazy with it. 
just because I have so much other money I'm tied up my other machines I'm still not even finished with so really I didn't even need to add another project <laughs> but you know when you can get it for that cheap man you gotta kind of strike on it you gotta get on it you know because I always wanted it I mean I have a smaller little my first one the old desktop one I built but I mean I wanted something that could do some some high quality parts yeah look how big that ball screw is too yeah this thing was definitely not some old cheapo machine it looks like it has a cast iron base yeah so it looks like a cast base um but that was that like a sfu 25 or 30 that was like 30 millimeters or something i think it's huge maybe 25 that's a huge ball screw yeah look at this thing look at the size of that ball screw this uh this thing looks nice i don't know because the accordion was kind of messed up i'm gonna wipe it all down in here yeah yeah you know it's not a cheap machine too when you have a, a dedicated oiler Yeah, the weight covers are getting a little bit folded. I actually unfolded them. Let me show you my solution. Here's my advice. I actually scrunched one together. So I'm going to try to keep it in here for a day or so. Maybe you can put some like a, kind of like a, like a UV protectant, you know, like armor all type of setup on there. Kind of soften it up a little bit. Um, yeah, that way it, it, it feels a little bit like it's getting a little, a little hard. So maybe just see if I can soften up a little bit. I mean, look at this gantry, man. I don't know if that, is that cast aluminum or something. I don't even know. It's machine aluminum or cast aluminum. But that's crazy rigid. You know, you don't. I mean, a typical like Chibo 6091 with like linear uh, rails. I mean, not like ball, like the the round ones. I forget what they're called. Linear linear rods. Um, I mean, those things are worth a thousand bucks. Like with cheap cheap components. You know, I mean, they use lead shine steppers, which are. Not the most horrible ones, but they're not closed loop. You know, there's no coder on the back of them. Um, yeah, look at that ball screw, man. God. I'm getting happier and happier the more I see this thing. Even just like these things right here, you know? It's not like a... That's the correct type of coupler, you know? Which is not going to give you any sort of backlash. Not like a 3D printer coupler where it has like the spring in it. To correct for misalignment. Alright, so I'm going to get some. I'm going to wipe that down. I'm not going to clean it out but I'm gonna take this cover off too get it all make sure it's all clean all right so I'm not gonna paint the whole thing again I'm just gonna touch it up with some uh, epoxy appliance paint um I might touch up the black stuff too all right I don't know if you guys can see that man those are high wind uh linear rails those are pretty high end um those to, for me to go out and buy these uh linear rails would probably definitely be more than 600 bucks um, yeah, I don't think I have any high one on any of my machines. Just they're so expensive, you know? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I'm working on this one a little bit. I'm trying to get that pinning off there. The main thing is you want to get these this part here. That's where the ball is right on. Get that smooth. This is the worst part here. Making some progress. Uh, probably never going to get rid of all that pitting, but it's nice and smooth on the, on the rail surface now. And here's the z-axis smaller ball screw but i don't have this thing under power yet so i'm gonna bring this down i'm gonna get the all the rails cleaned up yeah I mean, actually there's a bunch of aluminum flakes in here so you just cut aluminum i'm gonna get that top way cover off get it all cleaned up all right so on the smaller way covers zip tying them closed yeah because i wanted them to scrunch back together because we're kind of getting all kind of like wrinkled so I'm helping me with a little heat, maybe some some uh, you put them back in shape, maybe some like a uh, softener material. Let's see if we can get them back to work in shape. Even this cable things already looks pretty good. Uh, one of the things I learned about messing around the RC cars is like the silicone works incredible for storing plastic. Cut back, let it soak in. Yeah, I got working last night and had to run our 220 power cord up there, runs down. Um, yeah, I still got to get the oiling system dialed in <clears throat> because the, the, these rails are getting too much oil. You can see the overflow, but I'm actually okay with that. It actually kind of it flushed out the uh, bearings. Um, got to clean up pretty good. I'll show you that one. Yeah, the oiling system, it's, uh, I'll go to the other side, but it's, uh, it's working. Yeah, you adjust the oiling system by these little adjusters right here. So like I said, these are getting too much and these aren't getting enough. 
So, yeah, I still gotta figure that out. But I put some uh, really light grease on this, uh, some of my deoxid grease on this thing here. It's very light grease. Yeah, because these don't get actually oiled. So, you gotta grease the, the screws. Alright, let's turn this on. Yeah, I'm actually, I'll turn it on with this controller, but I'm not gonna. Um, I don't know if I went through this or not. You have a VFT, then you have a large transformer here. And these drivers are actually AC driven, not DC driven, because you'd actually have a rectifier. If these were DC, this converts to 70 volts, but then you'd have a rectifier that would convert to DC, but I don't see a rectifier. And plus, they, they, these are actually AC. It's about, I think it's like 36 to 80 volt AC. Alright. I'll grab this handheld. So, home all access. Yeah, I can't believe everything works right out of the box. It's crazy. Alright, cool, huh? I can just do that. But the thing is, this controller is a nightmare, though. Yeah, man. I mean, I can't imagine, like, loading a configuration file from here. Like, you use a USB cable or a USB stick, and, uh, but it's horrendous, man. I don't want to do that. I want something graphical. Alright, Z up and down. Yeah, I can't believe I scored this for 600 bucks. Still got to put the covers back on. But uh, that's not a big deal. But So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, one of my next videos coming out is I'm going to be converting this to Mach 3. And I do already have a controller. This is sort of like a medium range controller. It's not parallel port, it's Ethernet based. And uh, as you can see, I soldered some pins on here because I was, this can also run Linux CNC. I was reflashing the uh, processor. NVMe version 2. So this should be just almost a straight swap in there, but I'll make another video about that. Yeah, I can't believe it. 600 bucks. All right. Oh, yeah, here's the last reel. <laughs> This is the, this was the worst rail, so I got all the rust off it. I mean, it's still going to be a little bit discolored, but yeah, I can't believe everything works right out of the box. It's crazy. All right, awesome.